So let's consider how to use Fourier transform in partial differential equations. So consider the Fourier transform of some function f of x. We call that Fourier transform f hat, and it depends on p. And it's equal to the 1 over the square root of 2 pi, the integral from negative infinity to infinity, of f e to the i p x dx. Another notation that we'll use for this is this is curly f square brackets f of x. This is just another notation for what is called the Fourier transform of f of x. And we'll use this notation a bit. OK, so what we want to do is we want to now apply this idea of a Fourier transform to solving partial differential equations. Before we do that, we need some properties of the Fourier transform itself, curly f of something. So one of the properties is linearity. And linearity means if you have two functions, say f of x and g of x, then you can take the Fourier transform of the linear sum of them, a f of x plus b g of x, and the Fourier transform is just the sum of the Fourier transforms. So the a comes out of the Fourier transform of f of x plus b Fourier transform of g of x. We could actually write this in another way. We could write this as a f hat of p plus b g hat of p using the other notation that we typically use for Fourier transform, which cleans things up quite a bit. OK, so that's a useful property. Another useful property is the property of derivatives. So consider the Fourier transform of the first derivative of f with respect to x. So it turns out that this is i times p times the Fourier transform of f of x. Note that we can just relabel that Fourier transform, again, f hat of p. So we can clean this up to be i p f hat of p. That's the Fourier transform of the first derivative. The Fourier transform of the second derivative of f with respect to x is, well, you just do this two times. So you get ip twice, so ip squared, times the Fourier transform of f of x, which, again, that's just f hat. So when you square that, you get minus p squared f hat of p. Notice the i squared gives you just the minus sign. What if f is a function of x and t? Well, you can take the Fourier transform of the partial derivative of f with respect to t. And it turns out that the partial derivative just comes right out of the Fourier transform. So it's the partial derivative uh, with respect to t of the Fourier transform. Let's call that Fourier transform f hat of p comma t. Note that I've just exchanged x for p, but there's still t dependence. So there's still a time derivative. So we can take d f hat dt. What this means is that the Fourier transform really only cares about what happens in the x direction. Uh, the time derivatives um, that you might have in your equation just commute through. They just pass through the Fourier transform. The Fourier transform doesn't care. OK, so those are some of the properties that we're going to need in order to apply the Fourier transform. So now let's look into using the Fourier transform to solve problems. So for an example, consider a really long bar. So a bar that is essentially infinitely long. So it's hard to draw an infinite bar, but OK, so let's just draw a really long bar here. And you can imagine it just keeps going out to either side. Let me just label x equal to 0, for instance, somewhere in the middle here. So the temperature on a really long bar is described uh, by a function. We've looked at this before, u of x and t. And that u of x and t obeys a certain differential equation, the heat equation. The first derivative with respect to time is equal to alpha times the second derivative with respect to x. This is called the 1d heat equation. We also need an initial condition in order to study a problem like this. So the initial temperature on the bar uh, let's give it some initial temperature. Let's say u at x and t equal to 0 is u naught between negative a and a, and 0 everywhere else. So if I were to make a plot of what this initial condition would look like at t equal to 0 as a function of x, uh, it would only be non-zero in between negative a and a. So it's essentially a box. And at that point, it's a value of u naught. OK, 
So what we want to know in this problem is what is the temperature on the entire bar u of x and t for all time. And so the way we're going to do this is we're going to use this, solve this using Fourier transforms. So in the next video, we'll see how to apply Fourier transforms to this differential equation to turn into a problem that's much easier to solve.